people, what is going on? I'm back with another episode of the First in Frame Rates show. Uh, normally I do this on Sundays, but obviously I was out of town doing uh, my due diligence and going to watch Georgia Southern play Gardner Webb. You know, I always try to go to those games if possible. Uh, had a good time. So, uh, with that being said, I was in uh, Statesboro, so I was not able to do a stream or a show of this nature, not not from where I was. So what I did was I said I was just going to put it off, and yesterday was Labor Day, so I did not make the time to do that then. And, uh, you know, because it's Labor Day, so today I uh, felt like it was a good time to just go ahead and do the show. Um, this show will be on iTunes, Google Play soundcloud uh spotify anchor all your favorite podcast episodes i mean the platforms you can go there and check that out and uh if you want to listen on your time and and i will be advertising the podcast up on um on twitter so if you do follow me on twitter is vf baller you'll be able to find me there and uh, i'll be notifying everyone once it's actually up on those uh, platforms but if you want to you just go there now and, and google it and any of those uh, platforms put in first and frame rates i should pop right on up and those uh you can subscribe to those as well and um as soon as they pop up you'll get notified so um let's go ahead and uh get into this today i'm going to be talking about georgia southern versus uh, florida atlantic we do play them next um this uh weekend we will be playing them also uh we'll be um talking about gaming on youtube or twitch because um a lot of people may not know i do game i mean you can see all the stuff in the background right here uh if you're watching that i do game on uh you know a lot and most of the time i try to uh live stream when i do have the time to and um for the most part when I do live stream, I live stream on Twitch when it comes to the gaming side. All the other stuff I put over here on YouTube. But now it's coming apparent that I may just go ahead and jump ship and jump back over here to YouTube on my other YouTube channel and just start, uh, and I'm just going to start streaming over here because to me it just, just, it just feels more viable at this point. It just feels more, much better to do so. So uh, I'll be talking about that as well. Um, if you want to call in, the number will be 803-767-4242. You can call in. Also, you can click the link right there that's in the chat. It's pinned, and um, you can call in on that as well. So that's basically what's going on here, and hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy the show. Uh, let's see. Today, like I said, we just got finished beating Gardner Web 30-25. It was not the best outing uh, for Georgia Southern. Um, it was it was pretty solid offensively. Defensively, we could have done a little bit better, especially in the secondary. Um, we gave up a lot of pass plays, a lot of passing plays, and uh, it's something that you know we I, I I think it needs to be addressed because we do need to tighten up on that end of the uh, of, of defense. But I will also say that. Um, I, I will say that I think we'll be fine because those type of plays that they ran aren't necessarily ideal to what we're normally seeing. They ran a lot of um, screen plays, a lot of flats, um, plays that get guys in, in space. Um, we did get caught outside a little bit. Um, we're well not outside, but down the field a little bit. One was a trick play, which I was at the game and I didn't even know that this was a trick play. I mean, I just saw the guy catching the ball and going down the field. I was like, wait a minute. So those aren't going to happen every game, not the trick play anyway. Now there was a play that got caught over the, you know, over the middle down the field, which was, uh, I was kind of, uh, you know, kind of disappointed in, um, you know, Dow Baker got beat across the middle. I mean, down the field, down the seam. And that kind of, you know, uh, that kind of disappointed me. Everything else was somewhat contained, even though they did move the ball okay. But um, it was just, you know, it was those two plays that basically like, okay, we need to do a little bit better on defense. Um, I think safety help will work out a lot. But when the safeties are already looking at a lot of plays in the in the flats, those type of things will catch us off guard. Um, I don't think with Florida Atlantic that will happen. So therefore we'll talk about Florida Atlantic really shortly. Um Matter of fact, we can talk about them now. 
when it comes to Florida Atlantic, we beat them last year, 20 to three. And uh, I know, I don't think that was a, much of a complete team. We were supposed to play them earlier in the year. Um, but due to the virus, it got postponed to the end of the year. It was good that we was able to sk- still get that game on the schedule. And, uh, we did a pretty good job against that team. I mean, we did, we did really, really good. And, um, for the most part, I walked away from that game pretty impressed. And, uh, hopefully we'll duplicate that again. You know, that'll be, uh, great. And, uh, I, I just think that with this uh, go around, we're going down to Boca Raton, Florida. We're playing against a different team. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing because I have the stats right here that we'll, I will talk about that shortly. Uh, what's going on in Graven Viz? Good to see you here. Good to see you here. Good to see everybody else who have shown up and left. You know, I know people, this is not an ideal time for me to be live. I usually do this on Sunday, like I said. But I have to live up to my obligations and put an uh, episode out for um the 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 flow of the podcast on those uh on those podcast platforms so um yeah that's gonna be uh interesting yeah we're gonna be down to book of return florida we're gonna be playing fau and like i said we played them last um last year in statesboro but this year i think like i said it, it's not a bad thing that this team has been revamped because i'm gonna give you some some stats and i'm gonna give you some um some things that I saw with the eye test against uh, Florida Atlantic. So uh, Georgia Southern comes in this game. We run the ball very well. I think we ran for almost over three, almost 300 yards last year uh, against, uh, against them. Also, we ran pretty well against Gardner Webb. We, um, we, we run the ball very well. And one thing about Florida Atlantic, they cannot tackle. Florida Atlantic has a really uh, a really big problem with tackling. They gave up 400 yards against Florida, and uh, they didn't score until yeah, the fourth quarter. So that pretty much bodes well for our defense and our running game. We we should do very well when, when we play against them. Uh, also, I think we should mix it up with passing because they only threw for 153 against Florida Atlantic. And I think for us, I think that, you know, if we can get anywhere around that type of balance, I think we'll be fine because we gotta we gotta run that type of you know stat line anyway, so we should be okay. As far as them running the ball, they didn't do too well running the ball as well. They had ninety two yards rushing, and um that bodes well for our front seven. Our front seven do a very good job playing the run. Um, it, it, it's just it, I, like I said, I just think it bodes very well for um for Georgia Southern. Even though we're going into a hostile environment, I think that we should be okay. Uh, it's going to be totally different than it was last year. First of all, we're not at Paulson Stadium. And the second of all, um, they're going to be a, a more of a packed crowd down there. And, um, they're going to be more of a packed crowd in, in, down there in Boca Raton. So it's going, to, uh, it's going to be a little different, but I think if we play – our um if we do our if we have our game plan set i think we'll be fine i mean there's one thing about us i mean we do pretty well controlling the ball for the most part and i think now with the way that we ran the option yesterday well not yesterday but saturday for us not to give up the points i'm mean, not give up the points, but not to give up the ball on turnovers we ran the option very well where we took control we kept uh control of the ball we didn't play too loose and we didn't create any fumbles or anything like that. So uh, running the option should be pretty well. And hell, I think just running the ball in general will be fine. You're just talking to your boy about last night. Worship, that's what's up. That's what's up. You know, so I think like, I mean, even with the passing game, let me see what the stats we had with Gardner Webb. The full, the, I see, I mean, we ran for 365. I mean, we ran for 365 against uh, Gardner Webb. So we're, we're more than capable of continuing running the ball the way that we do, you know, um, I think that's something that, you know, just the staple of Georgia Southern, uh, as far as defensively, uh, FAU can't throw the ball. They thrown the ball fairly decent against Florida. They threw for 261. Uh, as far as their quarterback, um, the quarterback, Nicole, she Perry, 19 to 33, 261, one touchdown, no interceptions. Um, they, it's not the best numbers that you would like to see, but at the end of the day, those are pretty decent numbers when it, when it comes to, you know, just throwing the ball. So, um, 
they can throw the ball. So that's something our secondary is going to have to be prepared for. Um, I don't think they're going to be as, um, uh, I, I don't think they're going to be as deceptive as Gardner Webb because Gardner Webb, what they did was, like I said, they threw a lot of plays, threw a lot of uh, passes in the flats, a lot of screens, and they got us over the top with that us with us being prepared or looking for the flat or the screen, they just basically throw it over the threw it over the top on us and was able to uh be successful. So um especially with the trick play. I mean the trick play was another play that was thrown in the flats and it was a trick play that was thrown over the top. I mean those plays are going to work nine times out of ten, especially late in the game. So I'm not necessarily upset about that. But our secondary needs to tighten up on uh Florida Atlantic. Um like I said, I think Florida Atlantic has um they have the talent to to play ball. There's no doubt. I mean, they they you know even though they lost to the Florida 30 uh 35 to 14, uh for the most part, they did try their best to contain what they could. The problem was they just couldn't contain the running game. You know, they just couldn't. And uh I think with uh the likes of a Cameron Ransom, especially if he starts, I think that we'll be able to um really really um open up this uh open up this Florida Atlanta defense and we should be able to have a victory. I don't I don't see no other way. Uh, as far as the running game goes once again, you have Logan Logan Wright, JD King may be back. If that is that'd be a big big deal if he comes back. Um I would love to see that. Uh, also, we still have the the likes of Jalen White, which actually did pretty good um carrying the ball for the most part. Uh, also you got Gerald Green who did phenomenal, uh, you know, Gerald Green did phenomenal in this game. And, uh, that, that's one kid that's going to be, uh, going to, going to, with something we're going to have to be looking at as far as giving him more carries. Cause, um, he was 11 to 62, I mean, 11 to 72 for one touchdown, 6.5 yards of carry. Amari Jones, if we put him at running back, that will be another dynamic. So we, we got like four or five guys that can run the ball very well. And on top of that, we got receivers like Caleb Hood. I mean, I talk about these guys all the time. Caleb Hood, Bo Johnson, Chase Hancock caught a touchdown. Um, Emil Smith, that's the guy I forgot to talk about in the last video. Jay McAfee, we have, we have, we we pretty much have a complete team now. When you look at what we have in store, I really feel that not only with running the ball, passing the ball as well. I think we have a really good. Uh, I think we have a really, you know, we have a really good balance, not only on offense, but on defense as well. We can stop the run and possibly stop the passing game as well. Uh, I think our Achilles heel is stopping the pass. We'll see how that plays out. Like I said, uh, coach and um, coach Lunsford and company will have these guys prepared. They pretty much do a good job of adjusting and changing things. And it was good for them to see. It was good for them to see, good for us to see that they were aware of what was going on and for them to get things together on that end. Um, uh, after the press conference, what they were saying, it, it was, it's really good to see them get that uh, under wraps, knowing what, what they need to work on and hopefully they will be able to do so. I cannot wait to see how they play. Um, I don't have anything more. This is pretty much a preview. Once we get closer to the game, maybe like on Friday, I will have another video out talking about what we really have, because that's what we'll know if the likes of, like, you know, J.D. King is going to play, if Trent Watson is going to play, uh, who's going to be the starting quarterback, who's going to be the person that's um, that's going to be uh, um, behind the quarterback running the ball, who's going to get the majority of the carries. Uh, it, it's just uh, what the passing game is going to look like, what kind of scheme that we're going to do on defense. I think this is going to be something where um, we'll know around that time so definitely i'll be um uh, doing another video talking about that once game time comes up so hopefully you know we'll get more information then and we'll just go from there uh but as of right now i'm gonna give a early early prediction and you know i'm biased i do see georgia southern winning this game obviously um i think it's gonna be a little bit tougher than the Gardner web game believe it or not because the Gardner Webb wasn't the game wasn't necessarily tough. It was more us beating ourselves. But now we're going to go up against a different foe that that's possibly um, slightly more talented overall. Um, I think the predictions already got FAU beating us. Um, uh, I think they got a seventy one percent chance. I mean, those don't mean much. But I'm just looking at 
who are um who are we lining up against and who we're lining up against definitely uh shows um it, it definitely shows what we uh it definitely shows what the uh the outcome could be so we'll see how that plays out all right, I don't have much else to say on that one. We're going to jump over to gaming on Twitch or YouTube because, uh, like I said, knowing that I talk about a lot of sports, I do stream a lot of sports games on Twitch. And uh, I'm thinking about jumping over to YouTube. I've been hearing a lot of people saying, even when I got on Twitch, a lot of people have been saying, hey, it is easier for me to watch you on YouTube. And um, I can't, you know, I can't disagree for the most part. Um, hold on one second. I want to check something and I, I want to really, uh, possibly jump over there eventually because, uh, it's just more accessible. I mean, it, it really is just more, it's just more accessible at the end of the day. And what I want to do is get into an area where most people can watch and have a good time. And Twitch is a good place to go, but the problem is Twitch has so many issues going on. I mean, we got now, we got to set up this, these bots to stop hate raids and um, the monetization is just not um, viable at this point. I'm a, I'm a Twitch affiliate and um, they take like 50%, if not more of your revenue until you become partner. And coming partner is really, is a, is a climb. And I'm not saying it can't be done. I mean, I believe I can do it if I really put in the work. It's just that, is it worth it dealing with the hate raids and, and all this other stuff? Cause Twitch is not doing a good job of doing, you know, helping it, uh, helping us out for the most part, we have to do, do our own um, defense mechanism for which my defense mechanism is okay. Uh, I think it's all right. I haven't been hate rated yet. Even though I was followed by the, the person who said to be doing the hate raids and, um, I blocked that person. I'm pretty sure it's going to be some more uh, of that same nature, probably trying to follow my channel. And um, I just feel like at this point, uh, it's just a little bit too much to deal with. And like I said, over here on YouTube, it's a lot easier when I just, um, when I do uh, uh, basically stream over here. And there, you got big YouTubers that are starting to move over to YouTube, YouTube gaming. And, uh, YouTube is doing a pretty good job of dealing with a lot of, uh, um, you know, not necessarily the, the chats, but dealing with uh, streamers and how they're able to grow. I mean, I think they do a pretty good job of growing over here because the the search mechanism is a lot better over here than Twitch. The search mechanism on Twitch is fairly, you know, uh, it, I mean, is there is there a search mechanism? If anything, you have a situation where with YouTube, um, they give you a lot of recommendations based on what you like or, or, or what you've been watching video wise. And that's something that's pretty much that's needed on Twitch, but it's not on Twitch to the point where it's uh, YouTube. Uh, or, uh, for the most part, when you go on Twitch, you just have to type in the person that you're following. And, and in some cases, you can find other people that are you know, yeah, you can find other people that are basically uh, doing the same thing you're doing and it creates somewhat of an ecosystem for you to find other places where you can, um, you know, find the same content that you like. What's going on, Quayface? How you doing, bro? Good to see you here. Um, I don't usually do the, the episodes on today. You know, I normally do them on Sunday, but since I was out of town and Labor Day was yesterday, I'm over here doing this now. Um, but like I said, if you want to catch this after I go live, um, Google Play, SoundCloud, um, let me Google Play, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, iTunes, Anchor, and Spotify, this episode will be on those ep on channels so that you can go check that out. But I'm probably, I'm probably going to do one more uh, stream on Twitch. I may do that later on today. But in that, uh, on that, I'm announcing, I'm probably going to announce that I'm going to be moving over to YouTube and I'm going to be doing it on the VF cast channel. That's where all of my gaming stuff will be over there on the VF cast channel because, um, revenue wise, um, the revenue is just not there. And I know I may not be making nothing here in the long run when it comes to streaming. Uh, but I feel that when it comes to actually building and accessibility and um 
in some cases, some form of security, we will have a better, um, you know, better environment to stream. Now I know there are some places that are uh, right now that you get some raids that are pretty di much different. I ain't gonna say raids; you just get some spam that I've seen on YouTube. I know on um, Atlanta Falcons uh, Nation, they've been getting a few on on YouTube as well. They've been getting a couple of um, chat raids or whatever the case may be. And, but there wasn't no different than, I mean, no different. There's not no worse than the ones on Twitch. So, um, I think I'm going to probably stick with going ahead and jumping over to a YouTube and, um, Twitch just, I, I, I just don't, I, I've spent more time over here anyway on YouTube and uh, I'll probably be putting in the application to, uh, get away from, um, the partnership or the affiliate affiliate of uh, Twitch later on today. And um, that's something that I'm probably uh, going to do as well. And um, we'll just see how that goes. So right now, I feel like YouTube is on the up and up. Once they get things together with the chatting, because I know I know YouTube is looking at what's going on with Twitch. And I know they're looking at the hate rate. I know YouTube is going to do something to probably combat that. And um, it, it's going to be um, really, uh, once they do that, they combat how they do the things in the chat. It's probably much going to be a wrap because a lot of people on Twitch just not, they just, I, I don't say they don't feel safe. It's, it's not even about that. That's just a part of it. And for the most part, most people just feel like it's a better, um, it's just a better environment to be on YouTube uh, streaming. You know, it, it, it just, they just feel that way. And for me, um, like I said, the VF cast channel has room to grow, you know, especially with the type of content I put up on, on here, um, I think it has room to grow, so um, I'm definitely going to be doing that over there, streaming and gaming over there while I continue to do the videos over here, because I think that channel is more geared towards gaming in general anyway, and this one, this channel has turned to more into a sports style, you know, channel, you know, this this channel is jumped more into just doing more, uh, they're doing more, uh, I'm doing more over here as far as, uh, basically like sports, you know, especially when I, you know, talk about Georgia Southern, Atlanta Falcons, or when I talk about other, you know, teams throughout the league or in college or whatever the case may be, it just seems like it is going to that, that route. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the most part over here. And, uh, that, that's, that's pretty much it for me when it comes to, me jumping ship like i said i'll probably be streaming over there today if i do stream i may stream a game or i just may stream that i make an announcement that i'm moving over here to youtube because i just need to put in the application to drop off the twitch affiliate and uh we're just going to start growing on the vfcast channel hopefully you guys will come over there and um uh subscribe to that channel um, just type in on YouTube BFCast. I should pop right on up on that secondary channel as well. And I'll be streaming over there as well as um doing my thing over here. Uh normally around this time, around this this time of the show, I'd usually take in calls or if anybody wanna click the link to, to talk. Don't seem to like too many people here. I understand. This is totally different from what it is on the um it's totally different from what I normally do on Sundays. Sunday morning at 10 a.m., I normally uh, go live and talk about um, sports and sports gaming over here. Also, um, I do have another podcast called The VF Cast. I haven't done an episode over there in a while, which I need to jump on that. Those will be coming back really soon, and uh, I will be doing those as well. So um, if anybody wants to call in, then now is the time to do so. If not, I'm going to recap everything I talked about. I may even um, jump into a little bit of gaming news and then we'll just pretty much call it a day. So um, I don't see anybody uh, calling in. So that is fine. That's fine. I know this is an impromptu episode. Uh, all right. Let's get back into um, this uh, quarterback situation at Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern has, I'll say, a semi-quarterback problem. I think Cam Ransom should be starting. Amari Jones looked pretty good. We also have Justin Tomlin coming back from academic situations. Once he comes back from that, um, it's going to be really telling to see who's going to be the starter. I think Cam Ransom, that is just too much talent to keep on the sideline. He did very well in his debut. 
first pass was a touchdown. Um, I talked about this in my last video. The hype is real, and I think he will be able to um, do big things for George Southern. Um, you just don't keep that type of talent on the sideline. Also, I think we should go ahead and um, find a way to cater the offense around him. Therefore, that I don't think we're going to be do too, doing too much of dive options or anything like that. I think that we're going to be, uh, you know, actually, you know, making some plays downfield. And I think that's something that we really need at the end of the day when it comes to uh, moving the ball. I mean, if we could do that and still run the option, we'll be unstoppable. No doubt. I like my Georgia Southern Cup. It's a badass cup. But um, like I said, I think that we'll be able to um move the ball very well with ransom on the on, on, on under you know in the shotgun. Now I think Justin Tomlin can throw the ball as well. I think he he does pretty well throwing the ball, and I can't wait to see how that plays out. Um, because that's one thing I've always liked about him. He actually has an arm. He can throw the ball a little bit. You know, he actually could throw fairly well. And I just think his accuracy just need to be worked on a little bit. That's one thing that Cam Ransom has is accuracy is really, really good. So once um after the FAU game, we're really going to see how things play out when it comes to the quarterback situation. We're really definitely going to see that. Um, Also, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, I'm just going to talk about outside of the Sun Belt real, real quick. Did you guys see the Georgia game? I mean, I I don't really you know follow you know Georgia Bulldogs like that anymore, but the but Georgia looked really really well against you know Clemson. That defense was really nice. The offense didn't do too much, but that front seven is ferocious. Jesus Christ! You know I always talk about <laughs> I always talk about I want Georgia to play Georgia Southern. Like right now, I I don't know. I think Georgia's like on another level right now. I mean, I would love to see it, but. Georgia, Georgia still need to schedule us at some point. I mean, I mean, last time we played them was 2015. I mean, that's too long ago for two in-state teams not to play. But you know, that's another story for another day. Um, but Georgia looked really, yeah, exactly, Quayface. They were all over those guys. I mean, um, that was scary because I would never seen a Georgia defense look like that. I never seen Georgia defense look like that in a long time. Most of the time we saw Georgia, Georgia. I mean, outside of like when you had Roquan Smith or, or whatever the case may be, or um, oh goodness, what was the other guy? He was number twenty nine for Georgia. Oh, I can't remember him. But but outside of you know those two times when you had like one or two dynamic players, you I haven't seen this defense look this strong, this tough. They, they're scary good. So um, it kind of made me want to watch them a little bit, even though I, you know, you know, I'm, I'm really big on Georgia Southern. I mean, I'm like, it would. I, I will say this, even though we talk, we talk all our noise about Georgia Southern, not I mean, the Georgia uh, Bulldogs not able to capture a national title. They haven't had one since 1980, and we always talk about how Georgia Southern, you know, we have six. But R6 is from 1AA, FCS, you know, but, you know, they still mean something. I don't care what anybody say. We had, we had a legit playoff run to get those those six titles. We always talk about the state of, you know, Georgia Bulldogs not winning a title, but this could be their year. And I know Alabama is looking like how they look. They played against a, a Miami team that's that, that's somewhat, you know, so-so. You, know, you know, Miami team is so-so. They don't have the defense like Georgia has. Those two teams, they look like it's going to be them and nobody else. Clemson still has a chance. We'll see um, Ohio State. You know, they're always in the mix. Oklahoma, I have no faith in Oklahoma. They almost lost to Tulane. So I have, I have no no faith in, two, in them right now. Um, LSU, what happened to them? Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Ole Miss actually looked pretty decent, but I don't think they're ready yet. Florida, no. Uh, um, I'm thinking who? Oregon, maybe. USC, no. Um, so I, like I said, it is, it, I think it's Georgia and Alabama right now. And this is only week one. We'll see how things look when week five, week six comes around. But right now it just seems like it's those two and nobody else. And like I said, for much what we talk about with Georgia, it would be nice for the state of Georgia, for them to bring a national title. It would be, it would be nice to see the state of Georgia get a national title. So I'm not necessarily rooting for them. 
but I would not be opposed to them winning the national title. I would not be opposed to it because those guys, um, I ain't going to say they've been through a lot, but, you know, I, I don't say it's long overdue because after the 2007 season, when they beat up on Hawaii, everybody thought they were going to win when you had, uh, you had, uh, what's his name? Matthew Stafford, Noshawn Moreno, AJ Green. When you had those guys all together, you thought for certain that they were going to win a national title after that. After they beat, you know, rest in peace, um, Colt Brennan and the Hawaii, you thought that you thought they were ready to do it. But now it's like, you know, they, they got beat up by that, the same Alabama team they beat. They got lost to them and it, it crumbled from there. But, um, like I said, I feel that they're able to um, win it. You know, you know, I, I think they will. Quayface said, "G got to get the offense together. They'll blow." You know, I don't think Alabama will blow them out. I think it'll be more of a Clemson. A, it'll be more like the Clemson Georgia game because that front seven, that front seven of Georgia is not going to give Bryce Young that much time to throw. They, you know, and that's the thing. Bryce Young had a lot of time to throw. He threw for like four touchdowns against Miami. I'm not saying that Alabama will lose to Georgia. I think they still, I think it'll be like the Georgia Clemson game, but it'll be in reverse. I think Georgia will end up losing to Alabama somewhere along like 13 to 3, 13 to 6, you know, like 14 to 10, because that front seven is going to put pressure on Alabama, even though they have a pretty good offensive line. That I think that the Georgia front seven is more athletic. They were able to get to the quarterback. I don't think it would be much of a blowout. I just think that if they were played right now, I think it would be more like the Georgia-Clemson game, but in reverse, where Georgia will probably put up like three or six points, and Alabama will be able to get a touchdown, maybe two touchdowns, and then you're looking at a 14-6. to six. I, don't say it, I don't think either team will score over 20 points in this game if they were played right now. Now down the road, if they're playing the SEC title game, if they play in the national championship or in the playoff, you things change, personnel change. You never know what may happen. But as of right now, it just looks like it's going to be a low scoring game to where uh, Alabama beat them, you know, you know, like I said, 13 to, to, to nothing or uh, 13 to six or something like that. I don't, I don't think it'd be a blow. I think that front seven of Georgia is just a little bit, I, I, even the secondary of Georgia, and we didn't even talk about it. The secondary of Georgia is actually better than advertised. So I I, I think that it, it will be a low scoring game, but it'll be more of the, you know, 17 to six, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see a blowout. Not when you can get pressure on the front seven with the front seven, like Georgia did. I mean, if you can get pressure on the quarterback, you're not, you're not going to put up that many, you're not going to make that many plays. I don't care what kind of quarterback you are. If you got pressure in your face two seconds after the snap is, is after the snap, you're not going to make that many plays, you know? So, um, I, I still looking at Alabama, Georgia, it's going to be one of those two teams, but right now I think Alabama will probably, um, they'll probably beat Georgia. I think they'll, I think they'll beat Georgia. It'll be really, really close, but I think they end up beating them. Uh, so that was pretty uh, fascinating to see. Um, shout out to the guys um, from Georgia Southern that moved over to Louisville, got a chance to play last night. The, the outcome wasn't what they thought it would be. You had a situation where um, Ole Miss did beat um, Louisville pretty handily. Um, the Georgia Southern guys, Kendrick Duncan, played safety for the most part. He started uh, talking about um, – I'm talking about – he, he he started for uh, Louisville, and that was um pretty much a a pretty big deal when it came to uh it it, it came a, a pretty big deal when it came to uh the secondary because he did play pretty well. Shaw Works did play. He did get his leg rolled up on. He did um, walk off on his own um power, but he was injured in the game. That pretty much sucks. Um, so that 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 pretty much uh what it is. Um, if you want to uh, come through and uh, chat, click the link in the chat, or you can call the number 803-586-90. Oh, I'm calling the wrong number. 803-767-4242. You can do any, either one if you want to come in and talk. I mean, this is pretty much the time 
of the uh episode that we do so and uh i think that uh you can um the, the the line is basically open at the point you can click the link that's um in the chat or you could call in either one uh, i'm looking at something right now let's see Okay, I'm looking at a chat right now. I'm, uh, I'm sorry for the the pause right there. I'm looking for something. Looking at something in the chat, um, uh, on one of my uh channels. Somebody put something on the. But yeah, um, Dave Ten Eagle, if you want to come in, uh, there he is right there. Let's see, Dave Ten Eagle. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Dave, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hold on, let me, let me, let me, let me, hold on one second, one second. Yeah, I can hear you, Dave, just give me one second. Let me see. All right, can you hear me now? Oh, okay, great, great, great. All right, um, what is it that you want to talk about? Hold on one second, hold on one second. Say something now. Hello? Can All right, we good, we good, we good. Go ahead, go ahead, say something now. Go okay, ahead. yeah. I just want to talk about uh, our matchup for week one. Like, what do you think are the keys for y'all to winning? You're talking about Falcons versus Eagles, right? Yeah. Um, Our key to winning basically is put pressure on Jalen Hurts. Um, Mm -hmm. Our front seven with Dean Pease's defense is basically going to be the – that's going to be the catalyst of what we do. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what it's going to be. So if we can do that, we'll be fine. Um, as far as uh, offensively, just we just have to control the the, the tempo with the uh, running game. I'm not sure if we're ready with the passing that sets up the run. I think it's going to be opposite. I think it's going to be the run to set up the pass. So um, that's what we're going to have to do. Okay. And what you what do you uh, expect your record to be in this season? Hold on, your yeah, record. Okay. Okay, I just want to make sure the audio is good because right, this is this is new to me. So, uh, our record right now, I think we're going to be nine and eight. I think we're going to be a five hundred, a little bit slightly over five hundred, maybe ten and seven. Because we still got a lot of work to do. This is our first um, first year with Arthur Smith. This is our first mm-hmm. year with uh, our new GM, and there's a whole new scheme that we're running. So um, we went four in um, we went four and twelve last year. So um, I think five hundred is ideal for us. And I think that will be okay. But um, what about you? What do you think that you your um your Philadelphia Eagles need to do? Um, in order for us to win, I think we need to run the ball. Okay. And um, put Jalen Hurts in a situation to for him to succeed because we don't really have receivers, so a lot of run and play action. Use the run for play action, and then we need to rush the passer. To get to Matt Ryan to get him off his, get him off his game because we know when you pressure Matt Ryan, he's not really good with pressure. Yeah, that's basically you know that that's basically the the catalyst of football. You know, you set up the use the run to set up the pass, and then in, in some cases you will want to be in a situation to where you are uh yeah yeah in the situation where that you can put pressure on the quarterback. I mean, that's, that's basically what it is for both sides for the most part. Um, like I said, yeah. we got we got guys like Kyle Pitts. We got guys like, a, um, you know, Calvin Ridley. You know, we got guys that can actually, you know, spread the field. But if we go in just throwing, we become very one-dimensional. So it's, 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 it's very important to start off with the running game with a Mike Davis or a Wayne Gallman. We just picked him up. Mm-hmm or whatever the case may be. So if we do start off with the running game, it will set up, like you said, play action, or in some cases, just um, uh, just passing outright when it looks like the formation looks like it's going to be a run and play. So it, it's really um, important to see if we can uh, actually make that happen. So that's, uh, yeah. you know, it's pretty much, as far as defensively, I think if we have any weaknesses, we definitely have a weakness on the um on, in the secondary. Um, I, I, I noticed even with AJ Terrell and Fabian Monroe, we're doing pretty good, but I think the safeties are, are still not there yet to where we can um, actually lock down any passing. So I do see y'all having some success in the passing game over the running game. 
I think you guys will be um, a little more successful than that. Uh, our front seven with Dean Pease's defense, um, they show that they can blitz. They show that they can show stunts. They can show uh, all types of confusion for Jalen Hurts. So um, I'm not necessarily sure if um, necessarily running first would work. Maybe that will soften us up. But I think if he drops back to uh, the pass, our secondary is going to be the Achilles heel. We're going to have to get pressure mm-hmm. to help our secondary. Because right. um, if, if, you got, if you guys have time, y'all going to be fairly successful throwing the ball, especially with, you know, your new rookie, Devontae Smith. And then you got Jalen Rager. And um, um, uh, who's the other receiver y'all got? I can't remember the third one. But, Quez uh, Watkins. Yeah, Quez Watkins. There you go. And so you got you got guys who can catch the ball. So you, you got, I mean, like you said, you don't think you, you may think you don't have receivers. I think you just don't have anybody that's under the um the situation where they're experienced. But you got guys who right. are talented. So if he can get the ball to them, it's a plus for you guys. So it's gonna be really uh it's gonna be really important for us to actually try to get some uh some pressure on him because if not, if we if we can't get pressure on Jalen Hurts. I'm not gonna say he's gonna have a field day, but he's gonna have some success moving the ball downfield. Yeah, yeah, and I just, and I think the same thing. I think they're talented, but they're not proven. Right, and it's, it's only regular and, second season. Right, and um, we're gonna see over time if they can live up to their talent. And with Jalen Hurts, we still don't know what we got in him. He played four games last year, and in the four games. Um, he looked bad and he looked good at the same time. So right. we just got to see what if he if he's able to read defenses and able to get the ball out quick. And another thing is, are we going to be able to stay healthy? Because last year we was not healthy at all. Um, right. And we had about last year we had about fourteen different O line combinations, and I want to see if if we can stay healthy on the O-line because that's very important for a quarterback's development. Very, very, very important. So we, we're, we're starting a rookie at left guard at Jalen Mayfield and um, not the fact that we're talking about staying healthy or whatever, but that's that's somewhat of a, you know, that's a, a kink in our armor where, you know, he's brand new. So um, coach has faith in him, but like I said, he's brand new. So that's something as far as getting pressure, that's something that we're going to have to work on, probably get him some extra help or whatever the case may be. Because with him being a rookie, he's going to be tested. Um, as far as your rookie, uh, I mean, as far as your receivers, your receivers are going to be fine overall, and uh, I think you guys will be um, be able to have success down the road. But it's the first game, so it's going to be a little different with you know just starting out. Now, what yeah. I will say, as far as your quarterback situation, y'all just got Gardner Minshew. So Gardner Minshew is going to be somebody that you might need to watch for. He can play some ball. He did yeah. pretty good with the Jaguars with less talent. So yeah. um, Jalen Hurts is the guy right now, and that's um, you know rightfully so. But I would not be surprised. I said this in a video. Well, I think I said it on the last episode of the of the show. I would not be surprised if Gardner Minshew be the starter by the end of the year. And it's not a knock on Jalen Hurts because I think he's good, but I I think I think Gardner Minshew is slightly better. Yeah, I like and I like Minshew too. I think Jacksonville did him wrong by not building a team around and seeing what he can do. In my I agree. opinion, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And they end up getting you know Trevor Lawrence, which is I, which is understandable. You know, I understand it. I get it. But my thing is, for the most part, you had guys that were. Um, I mean, you, you had a you had a player yeah. that can actually still ball. You could have, you know, mm-hmm. you could have possibly get somebody else with that first overall pick and still been good at the quarterback situation. Yeah, but, and, it, and it seemed like they, that he had um, chemistry with the receivers too. Right, right, right. And you know, shout out to King David. He's uh, one of the guys that um, one of my subscribers here, and he followed me on Twitch as well. He's a big Jaguars fan. And he he was not he wasn't necessarily against picking Trevor Lawrence. But he did like Gardner Minshew, and I, you know, I liked him too. He he did pretty good for him. But I mean, he's 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 your player now, so it's it's good yeah. for you guys because now, like I said, even if Jalen Hurts does not, um, if he if he does not perform the way that you know you want him to, um, you do have a, a viable couple of good viable backups. I'm not sold on Joe Flacco anymore. I think he's over the hill. 
But Gardner Minshew is the he he could be the guy that actually you know do some things for you guys. I I, I it was a really good pickup for you guys, and um, it's it's gonna be really interesting to see how that plays out down the road. Yeah, it is, and even and even with that, we still have a couple of first round picks if because you never know with Howie, right? He you could he'll still draft another quarterback, but. We have um, two first-round picks, and if Carson Wentz can play, I think, at least 13 or 14 games, we have three first-round picks. But if he don't, we'll have a second-round pick. So, oh, okay. That was a, that was a, so, oh, so that was a conditional yeah. pick on the trade. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was a conditional pick, yeah. Okay, I got so, you. I, I didn't know that. But, yeah, yeah. And, and right now um, they're talking about Carson Wentz is probably going to be starting in week one because even though with his foot injury, they thought he was going to be out for the season – but after I think it was a second or third opinion, it turned out to be like he's actually going to be um playing week one. They got him active, so um yeah, that's going to be um good to see if he plays. Because you know, even though he's not on your team anymore, and I, I mean he's never been on my team, it it'll be good to see him play because it, it all the injuries he's had is very unfortunate what he's been going through. Yeah, because he's a to me he's a he's a good he's a great player to me. I agree. I, I, I don't totally I agree. don't I don't know what I don't know why. Philly built a statue after they got the Super Bowl. That was <laughs> dumb to me, but and I, and I don't think he was meant. People keep mentioning he was mentally weak. I would say that if he was mentally weak, why why was he still performing at a high level? I don't think. I think that. I mean, it, that's just the Philly. You know how Philly fans are. You know they they yeah. they find somebody soft, even they find a small thing to talk about. I don't. I don't think nothing was wrong with Carson Wentz. I think the problem with the front office kind of. I think I don't think the front office treated him well, even though he did very well for the team. And I think that's one of the reasons why he ended up getting traded. You know, it was just a, it was a bad situation where you know you have um, pretty much you can you you can make the argument that he's a generational you know talent quarterback, and mm-hmm. they they basically didn't they didn't handle him the best way possible. And it's really right. unfortunate because it seemed like it was a good fit for him to be a Philadelphia, a Philly, a Philadelphia, Philly, Philadelphia Eagles quarterback. I mean, it was just a good fit for him, and um, it is unfortunate. But like I said, you know, now you know with him playing, hopefully that help you guys out. And like I said, it moves on now because if you get that first round pick, that what you say you have what two or three. If we get the first round pick, it's three. Okay, so but if we don't, first we still have two. But yeah, either way, I mean, you got yeah. a lot to build on. Even if Gardner Minshew or Jalen Hurts isn't that guy, you still got right. a handful of quarterbacks coming out in the mm-hmm. draft. With one of those first round picks, you could pick a quarterback and, and not even break a sweat because you have another first round pick to fall back on. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, looking down the road, even though you know the season just started, you don't want to look that far down the road because you you don't never know what may happen this season you still have a lot to build on because a lot of teams don't have anything to build on after this after this season. I mean, look at us. As the Falcons, we may have a situation where we may have to, you know, get rid of Matt Ryan at the end of the season because of, of money issues. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I mean, it, I mean, it's not because of his talent. It's not because that he, he can't play. It's just um, – is it, it'll be a situation that he's going to cost us twenty one million uh, against the cap, and I don't know if the what the cap ceiling is going to be, but he's going to be accounted for twenty one million, I think. At least I'll say at least twenty one million. So therefore, it's going to be uh, something that we may have to you know look at. Maybe it'll be right. where that we we'll probably end up keeping them. But when you got guys like Josh Rosen and Felipe Franks. You never know. Josh Rosen may become that guy. Everybody talks about him, yeah. and he can't keep a, a job or whatever. But he never been in a, a in a stable environment or a stable team. Yeah, also, I think I think teams done him wrong. Josh yeah, Rosen. yeah. You really want to talk about a quarterback that's been done wrong? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. <laughs> you know, so you know he's in a he's in a really good spot right now that he could possibly mm-hmm. do something different. Also, um, we may have a situation with um, Felipe Franks. He, he's a, uh, a work in progress, but you never know how well he may develop. You know, he was an undrafted, um, he was an undrafted uh, free agent. I mean, very, very, very um, cap friendly because he's not making mm-hmm. the big bucks because he wasn't, you know, wasn't drafted. So, how long do you think? How long do you think it'll take for him to develop? Uh, I'll say, I, I'll say, give it a year, maybe, uh, maybe two. Two at the max. Mm-hmm. Two at the max. Because he, he played pretty well in the preseason. I think he just need to work on his throwing and his accuracy. 
and that and that just goes that just works with repetition because he's still a lot of he has a lot of raw talent. I mean, he can move in the pocket, mm-hmm. he can he can run, he got some speed on him. He has a cannon of an arm, it's just not accurate. And okay. it's something that it's just something that we that he has to work on. And I think like you said, if he goes to practice and he actually, you know, works on it, repetition, running plays, running drills over and over again, I think he'll be able to uh establish that. It's not a problem at all. It's just if he's able to put in the work, it'll be done. So, right. um, like I said, you guys, especially, you know, in the proje- trajectory sense, you guys are kind of going up as far as what the future holds. We're not going completely down, but it's more like it's not going up either. Because, like I said, Matt Ryan could play for another two or three years, honestly. But if the money's not there, then we may have a situation where we may have to move on from him, not in, at the end of this year, but probably the end of next year. So, it's something that we're gonna to have to look into. Um, anything else you got? Because we're getting about to an hour, and unfortunately, we don't have any more callers. But I'm going to wrap it up, uh, to wrap up the show. But uh, anything else you got? No, that's all. Hey man, listen, Dave Ten, you've been around for a long time, and I really appreciate your support. I appreciate you coming around. You like the guys of Quayface and Graven Viz. He was in the chat earlier. Uh, all the other people who usually come through and watch and listen. Um, like I said, I may be streaming my games over here on YouTube probably within the next day or so. So you mm-hmm. probably won't find me on Twitch anymore based on everything that's going on over there. I talked about that earlier in the in the show. So, um, I you know the link is in the description of that sh- of, of that channel. If you want to go over there and subscribe to the VF Cast channel, I should pop right on up. You can uh, subscribe over there. Not only I'll be doing the VF Cast um episodes over there, I'll be probably doing more gaming over there as well. Okay. All right, Dave, man. Good to see you, bro. And um, I appreciate you, man. I'll see you in the next one. All right. All right, man. You be easy. Peace. All right. That was a great call. Really good call. And I would like to have more calls like that. I mean, we need more calls like that and more people will have great questions like that. Um, Dave Tinn has been a really big supporter of the show for a long time. Also, everybody who's been Patreon members, Quayface, you already know what it is. Doug Thomas, Big Zay Mac, thank you guys for being Patreon members. I do extra content over there for you guys. I'm going to have another video for you guys up there very shortly. That'll probably be going up sometime tomorrow for you guys. Um, as far as everything else, um, thank you guys once again for uh, everyone for coming through and watching the show. You guys are amazing. I really appreciate the love and support. Without you guys, this doesn't go. It really don't. It's not just me talking. It's guys like Dave Tin. It's guys like everybody else who's um, willing to come through and show support hit the like button share give your two cents put um uh comments in the chat watching um the the, the videos the episodes and uh also on twitter when i'm on twitter also if you guys want to uh well, also if you want to follow me on twitter it is at vf baller you can find that as well and um basically i'll post all type of things on there as far as football and gaming as well so I'm going to get up out of here. Thank you guys once again. You guys are awesome. You guys be blessed. Episode 240 will be up on, it'll be live on Sunday um, at 10 a.m. We'll be talking about the pregame of the Atlanta Falcons game. We're going to talk about the recap of FAU versus Georgia Southern and all other things under that umbrella. So you guys take it easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.